Hey guys, as always, thanks for stopping by. So what if the worst happens in the coming weeks? Yep, let's talk about that. Today's episode is brought to you by CMMG. This one's gonna be fun to show you. I went to the range twice this week. First was with a viewer named Mark, and it turns out we have matching banshees. Twinsies, his has all the toys, and it's a sweet shooter. And then I went out with my buddy Ryan, and his banshee matches my resolute. So pick out your resolute or your banshee over at CMMG, and when you get there, be sure to tell them that I'm a bad influence on your wallet. Sorry, y'all. Hey, to all of y'all, always, thanks for those thumbs up. Those are a huge help. You know what I'm going to say. Comments down below help that Al Gore rhythm. So golly, y'all are the best. Okay, it's a crazy week. It is, and I think on some level, I think we're all kind of over it. I think we're tired. I know that I am. But I want to talk to you a little bit about what if the worst happens. I don't want to go through all the nuts and the bolts. Yes, I've seen the counters. I know about the Sharpies. I know all of that detailed stuff. And I think most of you all are pretty up to date on what's been going on. But I want to kind of give you an overview. Several of y'all have asked me where I'm at in all of this. And I kind of want to tell you what I'm thinking. I'm going to go through seven different keys. I think it's seven. Let me look at my notes. Yes, I got seven keys for you. Well-oiled machine going on here. And then I kind of want to hear what y'all have to say. This won't take long, but I think it's important to kind of stop and catch our breath and say, hey, what if we do elect, and it looks like it might happen, a Trojan horse. We have a dawdling old man who probably is on many levels unelectable, or at least cognitively should be. And then somebody else, Kamala, ends up in the White House in the coming weeks, months, or years. It's probably going to happen. Looks like maybe. I don't want to go through all that what if, but I do want to say what if. How are we thinking? Number one, we knew it was coming at some point. We knew at some point a severely anti-gun president would be in the Oval Office. That's not a surprise. Now, that actual comment, what got me thinking about that was from John Hickok, my buddy's Instagram feed. And he said that. He said, hey, we knew it was coming. We just didn't know when. And that made me stop. It made me really think about that. Yeah, we knew this was coming. Not going to be a big surprise. Dawdling old Joe Biden, or at least somebody on his team who can see the keyboard, typed out this, and I'll put it somewhere in here. I don't know. I'm looking at the screen here. I don't know if I left enough room. I'm usually off to one side. I'll put somewhere in here his tweet from November 1st. Yeah, it's a little bit frightening, but it's not a surprise. I think that's really good to stop and go, yes, it's scary but it's not a surprise. We knew this was coming. Number two, checks and balances, baby. The great thing about the founding fathers is we have a great checks and balances system, and so government is and should be limited. Now, I know that Harris has said some pretty crazy things about her executive orders of what she's going to do when she's in the White House. Yes, she has said that, and that's scary, but I am thankful for a fairly, sometimes, some years, some election seasons, a pretty strong Congress and sometimes a strong Senate, so we do have this strong checks and balances system, and the Supreme Court's looking pretty good these days. Number three, I don't know how this ties into the rest of these. I don't, but it's on my mind, and I wanted to share it with you. Number three, we had the Oval Office, the Senate, and the Congress super majority from 2016 to 2018 and we did nothing, like absolutely nothing. I think it's good to stop and just go, you know, we had that for three years and nothing got done. It's almost like we elected a 40 plus year Democrat under the conservative side or supposed to be the conservative side. I'm not saying it was terrible. A lot of good things happened. A whole lot of good things happened, especially with the economy. We had it for super majority. What happened? Yeah, let's talk about bump stocks. Number four, a lot of good happened in this election. How about you? I do want to hear from y'all in your different states. What good things happened in your state? I like what went on in Colorado. Lauren Boebert, I talked to y'all a couple months ago about her. She got elected to the 3rd Congressional District of Colorado. Pretty good. She packs the heat. What about in your state? Let us know down below what's going on in your state. A lot of good came out of this election season. A whole lot of good. Number five, a lot of y'all have asked, what about ammo and hardware? Will there continue to be shortages? Yep, it's going to be bad. I do think that I think we've got months, if not years, for this to catch up, if it ever catches up. I know that a lot of the trade stuff with China has affected things, like a lot of our raw materials comes from China. 
So that's going to continue, and I don't know what's going to take place with prices, but I don't know if we'll ever see 399 ARs again, ever again. And ammo should be, I hope in the next year, will loosen up, but it's tough. I think that's going to continue. That's bad news. Number six, I think this is good news. America, I believe this, and I do believe this. America is still worth fighting for. I'm not giving up. That didn't change anything. Like, no, not at all. I'm, I think it's still worth fighting for. I still love this place. I bleed red, white, and blue. Mostly red. And I think it's good to stop and go, no, Go. you know what? This place is pretty cool. It really is. We've got a good Christmas coming. Christmas is coming up. Hallmark movies. We got next year, next summer, we're going to be sitting at barbecues and sitting around campfires and hanging out with our friends. We have good days ahead. This place is fantastic. You go to your kitchen sink and you press, you turn that knob, unlimited hot water, unlimited potable water. It's a great place to be. Our roads are somewhat flat. I said that one time before that we've got smooth roads and a bunch of y'all up north said, no, we don't, Johnny, stop it. Regardless of how many potholes you have in your community, it's a pretty good place to live and I think it's worth fighting for. And number seven, our mission stays the same. And I think that's really important to stop and go, you know, you know what? Our mission doesn't change at all. Now, because we're conservatives, really our day-to-day -day lives don't change at all. If the worst happens, we're getting up and going to work in the morning because we're conservatives and what we do, we're not going to take to the streets and burn things down and live off of Uncle Sam and suck off of the government. No, doesn't change at all. So our day-to-day -day lives don't change, but then also our mission stays the same. Firearms for us is not a hobby. It is not a way of life. It's about being free men and women who do not succumb to the will of other people. How? Well, Second Amendment. So our mission doesn't change at all. Responsible owners, staying involved in our community, staying involved with local politics, state politics, even countywide, citywide, and on the national level. Nothing on those levels are going to change at all. And we're going to continue to fight through a very sane and hopefully logical way. We're not going to the streets and burning things down like moron leftists. Seven thoughts for the day. My last thought for y'all, we'd love to hear what y'all have to say. Let me know. But my last thought for y'all, mm hmm. Hammer of Justice from my cold, dead hands. Bye.